This video describes how to add gene expression data to a protein-protein interaction network using Cytoscape. First, we need to get all the interaction data. Uh, I used BioGrid, so first you can go to Google and search for BioGrid. Go to the Downloads page. Click on the current release. And download the organism.psi25. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and open the compressed folder and then find the organism that you will be using, which in this case we're using humans. And then go ahead and just copy it to somewhere you can find. So then you also need a CSV file that has all of your gene expression information, um, like this one here. Uh, looking at differentially expressed genes between HPV positive and HPV negative. Uh, we have things like the log FC value and FDR values, which we will add that information to our Cytoscape network. So go ahead and open Cytoscape. So now we will create our network by going to File, Import, Network from File, and then choose the BioGrid organism file that you had saved before. And then the next step will take a long time just to load the network. Once Cytoscape has created the network, it will then ask you if you want to create a network view. We're going to click OK. And then this step also takes a very long time. Now we have our network view, and we can see that we have the actual network diagram above, and then below we have a table up that contains all the nodes and the information that we got from BioGrid. If we look under the species column, we see that there are other organisms besides human. For our purposes, we would like to have just the nodes and interactions that are between human and HPV. We're going to go to select and then click the plus sign. We're going to choose, for the column, we're going to choose species short label. And we're going to choose contains and we'll type human because that will include both human and human papillomavirus. Then click apply. This will select all the nodes that correspond to the filter we want and then they light up in yellow. We'll go to File, New Network, from Selected Nodes, All Edges. So this will create a new network with just all the human and HPV nodes. So now we're gonna add our differentially expressed gene information to our network. So we're gonna go up into the top toolbar and click on the Import Data from Table. And then we're gonna select our our CSV file. In the box that pops up, it shows us all of our data that was in this CSV file for the gene expression. Um, it's the bolded column is the key column. That is what is going to try and match with the um, data from the biogrid. So it's going to it's going to match based on the name of the gene to merge the two data sets together. So we'll go ahead and import them to both networks and then click OK. So now using our differentially expressed gene information, we're going to color the nodes based on their uh, log FC values. So go to Style and then go down to Fill Color. Click on the middle button. We're going to color based on the log FC column. Then mapping type will be continuous mapping. If you double click on the color gradient, a new window will pop up. You can go ahead and click the set min and max value. I already know the min and max value for this data set, so I'll go ahead and change that. And then to change the colors for the gradient, double click the arrows on top. I'll change them to green. And 
and then red. Then any nodes or proteins that were not in our differentially expressed data set that we added will be will remain blue. So now we're going to create a subnetwork that shows all of the proteins that interact with E6. In the search bar in the top right corner, we're going to type in E6. And then three different E6s come up for the different HPV viruses. We're going to select the HPV 16, right click, and go down to select nodes from selected rows. That will select just the HPV 16 one. Go to the top and click select, and then nodes, and then first neighbor of selected nodes. And we'll choose unidirected. And then that will select all of the nodes that are that interact with E6. If we scroll down, we can see all of them listed in the node table. So now we're going to create a subnetwork showing just these nodes. Go to File, New Network, from Selected Nodes, All Edges. And then that will create the network with just all the interactions with E6. So then we can rename the new subnetwork we made by right-clicking and rename it, we'll call it E6 Interactions. And then also if we notice on the actual network, we have a lot of duplicate edges or lines between nodes and also a lot of these curved ones that are um, like self loops saying that the protein interacts with itself. Um, they're kind of redundant. So we're gonna go ahead and go edit and then remove duplicated edges. A window will pop up and ask us which network we'd like to do this. We'll go ahead and do it on our E6 one. And then we'll also go ahead and remove the, the self loops by going to edit, remove self loops, and then again, select the E6 network. And then that cleans up our network a lot. However, the layout is still really messy. So if we go to the layout tab in the top toolbar, and then there's tons of different layouts you can play around with depending on what your network looks like. I like the edge weighted spring layout, so we'll go ahead and click that one. And then it now makes this nice circular one with E6 basically at the center. There's one node overlapping, so I just clicked it and dragged it out of the way. And if you wanted to save this network as a image, click the, the little side arrow down at the bottom and click export as image and then you can save it. And additionally, if you'd like to save the node table, you can click that similar arrow down below and save that, it will save as a CSV. And you can also save the edge table, 